Yes? Uh, okay. Yes. Great. Okay. Oops, wrong way. So uh, let's, I'm not going to take anything for granted. Uh, what is study abroad? So study abroad involves students taking a course overseas in a preferred subject, it could be any subject, that they can later transfer to their transcript back home. Traditionally, it involves physical travel to another country. Usually students take advantage of the winter semester and they'll go away for two to three weeks before classes start in the spring. Or the summer is also very popular uh, and these programs can last anywhere from three to six weeks on average. Students usually travel with a group leader and a group of other students, which is called a cohort. So usually you're not going by yourself, you're with other students. Uh, and the package, um, the packages vary, but typically they include health and travel insurance, your housing costs, some meals, for example, breakfast, and some group excursions. So for example, if you're going to do the CUNY Paris uh, study abroad, uh, usually you'll have, um, a trip to the Eiffel Tower in there that's included in the cost or a trip to the Louvre Museum. Um, it really depends on the package. And uh, CUNY tuition applies to overseas classes. So you're not paying um, the overseas institution different money. Uh, whatever you would pay for, for example, for three credits at LaGuardia, that's what you would pay for the class that you're taking overseas. So the, the big elephant in the room is COVID-19. What is the impact of COVID-19 on study abroad? CUNY is most likely to resume study abroad in the winter of 2022, which is uh, basically a year from now. So around this time next year, uh, if, if not all the programs, at least some of the programs should start running. However, Applications can be very time consuming. So gathering information and getting an early start like what you're doing right now will definitely give you an advantage. We're gonna to focus today on CUNY programs. CUNY study abroad programs are wide ranging. You can find almost anything you can imagine uh, in, through CUNY. So, you want to study abroad. Uh, we asked you earlier which country you're interested in going to. That's cer certainly a place to start. Just come up with places you would want to visit. Uh, another thing that you can do is you can actually go to uh, websites um, that, uh, CUNY websites that have study abroad offices. LaGuardia Community College does not have a study abroad office, but as, a C as CUNY students, you can take study abroad programs and join in on study abroad programs in any CUNY campus. Uh, so I'm just gonna click on one of them just to you know, get an idea. So Queens College, here's their study abroad page. And you see here, if you're interested in studying Arabic, they have something uh, for Morocco. Again, this is suspended right now due to COVID-19, but these are programs that are going to pick up once, uh, hopefully in winter 2022. Um, so let's see some of their winter programs. We see here Australia, if you want to go to Australia and cross-cultural management, uh, Berlin, there are a few programs there. If you want to study immigrants, citizenship and nationalism in Greece, there's a, uh, a study abroad program. Uh, Florence has several programs. Japan has a lot of uh, programs. Uh, are you interested in film and culture in Japan? Are you interested in sports, business, and Japanese culture? Um, are you interested in creative writing? Tokyo Lights, a creative writing seminar. Uh, South Africa, humans and nature. Uh, South Korea is also very popular if you're interested in mass media and popular culture. And then also Spain, Barcelona, sustain sustainability and uh, resilient city. Um, so those are just, that's just Queens College winter 22, 2020 programs, you know, that, that are not running now, but that will be running. 
So you can feel free to, to go to, oops, what did I do? I'm trying to get myself back to Google Docs. Oh, here we go. So you can feel free to go to any of these websites and they're not all listed, any CUNY campus and explore, see what you like, see what jumps out at you. Uh, and then this is just another list that we all just went through of some uh, programs that are available. Uh, it, there's also Italy as well and Peru, Cambodia as well. So after you've identified one or two programs that you're interested in, what you should do is you should schedule a meeting with the head of your department or your concentration so that you can get feedback and see how a study abroad program can be applied to your degree. So what do I mean by that? Uh, LaGuardia students, as I said, can participate in study abroad programs hosted by any CUNY campus. It's through a process called e-permit and your advisor can help you with that when you get to that point. But things to look for. You want uh, the study abroad broad program to be credit bearing. So you wanna get credits for it and CUNY programs do give you credits for it. And you want it to be a relatively straightforward registration process as well. You don't want it to be too complicated. Everything should be happening in one um, you know, through one office. Something else that you should, some things, the other things that you should keep in mind is that um, you may not, even though you might get credits, you might not get credits uh, that go towards your major. So in other words, uh, they might end up being elective credits. That's not necessarily something bad because if, especially if you're planning on going on a, to a senior college, you can have those credits transferred as elective credits. So you don't lose, it's not that you're not getting credits, it's just that they might not actually be credits that you can apply to your major. But that's something that you need to talk to with your department head or the head of your concentration. So if you can, it's great if you can have them apply to your major. Otherwise, they're going to be electives, which is okay, but obviously we prefer if they go towards uh, you know, your actual major. Uh, and uh, there are some programs where the home campus students have priority over e-permit students. So when you find programs that you're interested in, be sure to ask and find out, um, you know, say, hey, if I apply to this, I'm a LaGuardia student, am I gonna get the same priority as the other students? when I apply. So you know if you're, you know, how demanding is the program, for example? Uh, how many seats are there uh, to applicants? So that you know where you're gonna put your energy. So let's look at the general application process. Uh, each program, of course, requires different application materials, but you typically need an, to fill out an application form. They'll ask you for a personal statement which is a one to two page essay explaining why you wish to join, to participate in the program and how it's gonna to contribute to your education. I saw some of you already wrote some really nice things in the Google doc earlier. Uh, a minimum 2.5 GPA is usually required. They'll ask for a recommendation letter from one faculty member, uh, so a professor. Uh, make sure you're, um, you're in good standing financially and in terms of discipline, no holds. Sometimes they'll ask for an interview, not always. And there's usually a deposit involved anywhere from 50 to $100. You will also need a passport. All study abroad programs, uh, except for those in US territories such as Puerto Rico require a passport. Or in the case of DACA students, um, there's something called advanced parole. So um, if you're someone who is unable to get a passport, there are some ways around it. And that's something that you can explore through this link um, that we've included here. Um, some destinations also require a visa. So a visa is basically a pre-approval. 
And whether you need a pre-approval, it depends on what type of passport you have. So do you have a US passport? Do you have an Ecuadorian passport? All this is gonna determine, and also which country you're going to. So let me, um, there's, there's a link here, the Henley P Passport Index, and you can actually check, um, So let's say, I don't know, give me a passport. Passport of a country. Should I put the US? Okay, so if I have a US passport, um, it actually tells me what destinations I could go to without needing a visa. So the places that have a tick mark here, it means if I wanna to go to these countries, I have to get pre-approval. I cannot buy a ticket, for example, to Hong Kong with a US passport and just show up at the airport. It means that I have to have my passport and then I need to make sure I get pre-approved in order to travel to go to Hong Kong. Otherwise, when I get to the airport, they're not gonna let me on the airplane. So. Uh, this is just, this is a link that's included and you can play around with it uh, depending on what I put in a U.S. passport, but you may have other passports um, and you could just enter it and, um, and figure it out from there. Um, and... Okay, oops. Um, when you get this uh, slideshow also, there are um, some podcasts of uh, students talking about their study abroad experiences. So I'm not gonna do this now, but you can click on the link and you could hear about other CUNY students that have traveled to different destinations and what it was like and you know uh, their experiences. And uh, and finally, I do wanna mention, there is something going on right now called virtual study abroad. So some CUNY campuses are offering remote course credit and internships at overseas companies now, right now. Um, so uh, for example, uh, Brooklyn College has something, um, you know, where you know, here's a psychology, cross-cultural psychology course in uh, Florence, Italy, but you're not actually going to Florence, Italy. You're doing it remotely. And you also do an internship with a company in Florence, Italy. So you're basically taking a course, take, getting the credits, and you're doing an internship with a company. Um, I personally am not, I'm not a big fan of the virtual study abroad. Um, I think study abroad, you know, should be something you physically do. But you know, there are opportunities with the virtual study abroad. If you're interested, uh, there's nothing wrong with, you know, doing an internship with an overseas company. It, might, it may be something that leads to other things. But I just wanted you to be aware that there are some virtual study abroad programs that are that you can take advantage of now. If you're interested in the traditional study abroad, then that's something that you can start planning now. But that probably won't be available until uh, winter 2022. So, and with that, um, here's the big question. Sounds like a lot of money. How am I going to pay for this? So uh, Professor Nagano and Professor Lau will talk to you now about what you can do to mitigate the costs and make study abroad a reality for yourself because this stuff does cost money. And uh, you can, uh, I'm not sure how to stop sharing. Oh, here we go. 